Hi, I am Yuzu Sain from Scott. Today, we are going to discuss how workload backup works in Stash, and we will try to give a quick demo. Then finally, we will try to answer some frequently asked question. Okay, let's start with the basic. What is a workload? In Kubernetes, your pod and pod controllers, for example, deployment, stateful set, these are workloads. Stash can take backup of this deployment, stateful set, daemon set, replica set, replication controller. It can also take backup the deployment config of OpenShift. So what you can take backup in this workload model, workload backup model? You can actually take backup of directories, some directories and some individual files. We have to keep in mind that workload backup, in workload backup, we cannot backup the resource definition. I mean the YML definition of deployment or stateful set. This is handled by another model we call cluster resource backup. We will try to discuss about that in a separate video. Okay, this diagram is showing how backup works. In the upper right corner, we can see a backend. This can be a cloud bucket, for example, S3 bucket, Azure container, or it can be a Kubernetes volume. It can be also, it can be a NFS server. Uh, in this backend, we will insert the backup data. Then we can see a repos repository CR. This repository CR actually contains the information of this bucket. And there is a storage secret. This storage secret will contain the credential to access this backend. At first, a user have to create a storage secret then he has to create a repository CR. Then he will create a backup configuration. This backup configuration will tell Stash what to backup and how often user want to backup. When a Stash operator sees a backup configuration, it will inject a Stash sidecar inside the workload, targeted workload, then it will create a cron job. This cron job will trigger backup periodically. Okay. So when a backup schedule appear, the cron job create a backup session share. This backup session share is watched by the star sidecar inside the targeted workload. When this star sidecar sees a backup session, it immediately takes backup in the backend. Then the next diagram show how restore works. Okay. In order to restore, user have to create a restore session, CR. This restore session CR will contain the information where user want to restore and what is the source of backup data. When User create a restore session CR. Stash operator watches for the CR and inject a stash init container inside the targeted workload. The targeted workload get restarted with the init container and the init container restore the data from the backend. Okay, since now we have some understanding how backup working, let's see it in action. Okay, here I have created a cluster and I have installed stash operator in kubesystem namespace. You can install the operator in any namespace, namespace you want. I have just installed in kubesystem for convenience. Uh, in this terminal, we will watch for ports in all, all, all namespace, of all namespace. 
In the bottom terminal, we'll watch for a uh, repository share. Then in the next terminal, we'll watch for backup configuration share. Then in this terminal, we'll watch for backup session share. Finally, in this terminal, we'll watch for restore session share. We'll run all our command in this left terminal. Okay. At first, let's create a namespace called demo. We will uh, create all our resources in this demo namespace. Okay. Today, we are going to take backup of a stateful set. Here is my stateful set. This stateful set has a volume called data volume. This and it's mounting this volume in my data mount path. Okay, let's get the stateful set. <clears throat> Give it few seconds to come up. Mm -hmm. So a stateful set is ready. Now let's generate some sample data inside this stateful set. I am Executing inside first part, which is stash demo zero. Okay, then let's create a sample file called sample data in my data mount path. Okay, let's write some data. Sample data of stash demo zero part okay let's save it okay verify the data has been saved here it okay let's do same for the second part Sample data data for stash demo zero part. Okay, again verify. Uh, so sample data has been generated. Now we'll start, we'll configure a backup for this stateful set. Here, I am going to take backup in a S3 bucket. Uh, we have a bucket called stash QA and currently it is empty. So at first, let's create a repository share. Here is a repository share. We are calling it S3 repo and this is containing the S3 information, bucket information. This is the stash QA bucket and we want to store the, back, store the uh, backup data in this directory of this bucket. Okay, we also need a, uh, we also need to create a storage secret which will contain the access credential of this bucket. Okay, let's get the storage secret first. Create secret. Okay, so we are creating a storage secret in our demo namespace. We are calling it a S3 secret and it containing a WS access scan secret key. We have also another credential called restrict password. Uh, this password will be used to encrypt the backup data. So let's create it. Okay, secret has been created. Now we can create this repository. kubectl line repository. Okay, so repository has been created. So we can see the repository here, S3 repo. Okay, now we have to create a backup configuration targeting the stateful set. Here is my backup configuration. Uh, in this target field, I am referring to the stateful set. The stasdemo stateful set we have deployed. Stasdemo stateful set. 
So we want to take backup of this my data path and this my uh, this data volume has been mounted in this my data path. So we have to specify this because uh, this volume will be mounted inside stash sidecar. We have to keep in mind that uh, this mount part sh should be same as the mount part of this stateful set. Okay. So this is my target section where I am telling what I want to take backup. Then there I have referring to the repository where I want to store the backup. Then I have specified a schedule, how often I want to take backup. Here I, for demonstration purpose, I have uh, created, uh, created a set up a schedule in every three minutes. Then in the next section, we can see retention policy. Okay, this retention policy actually refer to the, uh, uh, actually specify how to clean up the old data. I mean, over time, Stash will take a snapshot, so there will be lots of data uh, in your bucket. So we should uh, specify how, uh, how much data we want to keep and how to clean up the old data. So here I am telling uh, to keep only the last five snapshot. Okay. So let's create the backup session. Backup configuration, sorry. Okay, I have created backup configuration. So when stash operator sees this backup configuration, it will pass the stateful set and inject a stash sidecar inside it. Give it a few minutes. Currently it has one container. Now it will start with another container. Uh, so it has started with two container. One is its original container and another is its test sidecar. So the stateful set is ready. Uh, here a backup session has started. It's currently in running phase. Give it a few minutes. So we have already a snapshot in the repository. Actually for this snapshot, uh, stateful set, every pod will take a snapshot. So one snapshot for this stash demo zero and another snapshot for stash demo one. We can already see one, snap one pod has completed its completed it snapshot backup. So another is taking the backup, give it a few more seconds. Uh, so the backup has succeeded. Now, if we return to the bucket, let's reload it. Hmm, you, ca you can see that there is a data here. So this is the backup data. Uh, actually, uh, all these data are encrypted, so it will not make sense until they are decrypted. Okay, 
So you can see that uh, this backup data is stored in the same prefix we have specified in repositories here in this directory. So this backup data has been stored in this directory. Okay. So backup is done now. We will register at first. Let's temporary pause the backup. Okay, so we are pausing the backup. Backup is now paused. So no new back no new backup session will be created until we resume it. Okay, let's simulate a register. I mean, for this de demonstration, I will, uh, I mean, I will simulate that our data has been corrupted. I am just simply executing inside the pod and change the data. Data, sample data. So that was our original data. I want to make it corrupted. Just simply writing corrupted. Let's save it. Verify data has been changed. Okay, so data has been corrupted. Let's do the same for part one. My data, sample data. So my data has been corrupted. Verify. <laughs> so both of pod now has corrupted data. That is not actually the data we have originally created. Now it's time to restore from our backup data. Now we can actually uh, do two things. One, we can restore the backup data in a new in a new PVC. Then we can use this PVC to deploy the deploy a new stateful set. Or we can restore the backup data inside the same stateful set. Here I am going to restore the data in the same stateful set. So in order to restore, I have to create a CR called restore session. So in this restore session CR, I am telling that this is my target where I should restore. I have also specified the mount path, the respective volumes. Then I am telling this repository which is the source of this backup data, where is the backup data is stored. And here I have specified rules. This rule section actually specify how to restore, uh, uh, which data to restore. We'll uh, uh, talk about this later. And then I have uh, added a hook here. Uh, this hook will actually, uh, Remove the corrupted data first, then we'll restore. This will remove the older data from my data directories, then it will restore from the original backup. Okay, so let's create the restore session. My restore session. Okay, restore session created. Here is my restore session. And Stash has injected a init container in the stateful set. So the stateful set it is starting with the init container. You can check its YML. Stash demo stateful set. Oh. I have specified get to edge. So here we can see Stash has injected an init container that is performing cluster. OK. 
okay give it few second first part has already started with after restore and the second part zero is, is restoring now Give it few more seconds. So the edit container is kicking up. It, it is restoring. Okay, so the restore has succeeded. Now let's verify the restore data. Tell exec first the first word cat my data sample. So we can see this is the this is our original data we generated before the backup. Let's do the same. For the part two, mm -hmm. okay. So here it has also restored the data. Okay, so restore has succeeded now. Mm, okay, so sometimes we get a uh, question about uh, what should we do? Actually, uh, these pods now containing this restore stash in it container. So should we remove it? You actually don't need to remove it uh, because this init container has completed, so it is not taking any resources. Uh, one may, uh, someone may be concerned about what if this pod get restored, will it restore again? Uh, actually, Stash, uh, uh, when your pod will restart, Stash will check if it has already restored, if it, is, it has been rest, uh, rest, uh, restored before, then it will not restore again. So, you don't have to worry about port register. Okay, so restore has succeeded. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to slide. Okay. Okay, so one question we often get, how many snapshot on as backup? For deployment of replica set, and replication controller, all pod uses the same volume. So in this case, we can only take one backup, one snapshot. This is done by a leader reaction. So it's the sidecar of all the pods will elect a leader, then only the leader pod will take a snapshot. For a stateful set, the stateful set uh, parts mounts different volume, so we ha we should take uh, we should take backup of this all volume. Hence, for a stateful set, the number of backup for in each backup session will be the number of parts. I mean, the number of replicas, and the for demo set, uh, the number of snapshot will be number of nodes where the daemon is running. Furthermore, uh, here I have shown that I have taken backup of a one path. So you can take backup multiple path. I mean, you can specify another, another path. In this case, Stash will take backup one snapshot for each path. Since we have backup one path here I have backup so 
we, we have seen one snapshot per part. If we took backup two snapshot, uh, two path, then we should see two snapshot per backup per part. So if you have a stateful set with two replica and you are, you are taking backup of two path, then in each backup session, you will see four snapshot. Okay, then uh, people ask how retention policy work? I mean, which snapshot get cleaned? How is test decide which snapshot to clean? And when these retention policies are applied? Okay, it's just applied retention policy after all the paths are backup for a host. Uh, this host actually the pod that is taking backup. So for a stateful set, uh, my two pod is taking backup. So when first pod has completed taking backup all of its path, then it will apply this retention policy. Then the second pod will take the backup and once the backup complete, it will apply the retention policy. The retention policies uh, start select the uh, snapshot by grouping by the host and path. So as we have specified uh, to clean up, the, to keep last five snapshot. So here we have two pod, I mean two host which is taking backup and we are taking backup of a path. So stash first will group the snapshot by the path. I mean, it will group the available snapshot of the repository. Uh, it will separate the snapshot of the first pod and uh, path one, and then first pod, path two, and then second pod second part, path one, and second part, part two. Then it will apply the retention policy in each group. So uh, as we have specified to keep last five snapshot, it will actually keep the snapshot, last five snapshot of the first part, and it uh, last five snapshot of the second part. part. Uh, you can also specify multiple retention policies. For example, uh, here I have uh, specified keep last. Uh, I can add another retention policy. Uh, maybe I can call it uh, keep daily, keep weekly. All these retention policies are odd. I mean, first, Stash will apply the retention policy uh, first retention policy, it will not actually remove the snapshot. It will first uh, apply the retention policy, first retention policy, and it will mark which snapshot to keep according to first retention policy. Then it will apply the second retention policy and mark the snapshot which should be kept according to the second retention policy. When all the snapshot, uh, all the retention policies are applied, then it will uh, keep the all marked snapshot and remove the rest of the snapshots. Okay, uh, we have to keep in mind that retention policy and backup history limit are not the same. In Stash, we have a field called backup history limit. Let me show you. In backup configuration, here is a field called backup history limit. This backup history limit actually uh, tell stash how many backup session and associate for to keep after each backup. This is helpful for debugging purpose. By default, it is one. So after one, uh, every successful backup, the old one will be deleted. If I have I had a specified backup history limit three, then it will, uh, it would keep the last three 
backup session and the respective job path pod. So this backup history limit has nothing to do with the uh, retention policy. It has no, no relation with the snapshot. This is for debugging purpose only. Okay, let's go back to the slide, okay, yeah. Then you have see the rule section, restore rules. Okay, let me show a more complex rules. Restore session, okay. Here I have a complex rule. This rule section will actually tell stash which snapshot which snapshot to restore, which path to restore, and where this restore data to go. We can specify multiple roles. Here I have specified a role that for host three, I mean port three, and host four, I mean port four, the restore data should come from backup data of the host one. This is actually an example of where uh, I have a stateful, I have taken a backup of a stateful set with three replica. Now I am restoring the backup data and I want to scale up my stateful set. So for the scaled up pods, the last two pods, uh, we want to populate some data from backup. So here I am populating from the backup data of pod one. And then we are specifying that uh, this is come, uh, this source data directory should restore. We can also specify a, uh, rules where empty host, uh, you will, you can learn about these details in this documentation. This will tell the part uh, actually, uh, this will tell the stash that data of port zero should restore from data of backup zero and data of port one, port one should restore from backup data of port one and so on. And it will match for all the ports. So uh, as we have seen that there is a two types of rule where one has target source specified and another target host empty. This empty target host will work for all of the parts, but it just give priorities for the non-empty host. So for example, this rule will match only for the part one and part, uh, part three and part four but this rule will match for all pod, pod one, two, three, four. So Istash will first check if there is any non-empty rule that match the pod, uh, match, match a pod. If it find a non-empty rule, then it apply that. So if there is no non-empty rule, then this empty rule, I mean rule with empty target host, will match this part and it will restore from the res respective backup. Okay. Uh, if there is multiple uh, role that match this uh, uh, match for a host, then only the first match rule is applied. And we can also specify a snapshot. There is a snapshot field in the host. Let me show you. Okay, this actually helpful for database backup. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in the, okay. Restore session, where is restore session? Okay, here is the restore session. So, in this role, we can just specify the snapshots. And I am telling it the 
uh, telling it to restore the latest snapshot. But we can also uh, specify a particular snapshot name to restore. For example, if we query which snapshot are available, snapshots, So we had these two snapshots in our back bucket. So we can actually specify this snapshot here. If we specify this snapshot, then the particular data that was backup in this snapshot will be restored. Otherwise, if we specify only the path, for example, here I have specified the path only, then the latest backup of this path will be restored. If we specify uh, both snapshot and path, only the data inside the snapshot will be restored and the path field will be ignored. So don't specify snapshot and the path in the same rule. Okay. Then, uh, so if you have seen the how workload backup work and you have seen any work, working demo, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, when you should use this workload backup. You should use to backup uh, this workload backup to backup the directories. I mean, workload backup works, uh, take file system backup. So you should not uh, use this workload backup to backup the database. Also, although this database uh, actually stores data in, in a file, but if you use this workload backup to backup those files, you cannot guarantee the consistency. For example, if uh, you use to backup a database in workload model, when the sidecar is taking backup, your database might we're writing the inside the file. So you will not have the data consistency. So in this case, you should use database specific beta backup model. We uh, still support multiple database backup. Uh, you should use them. Then if you don't want to in, uh, inject a sidecar inside your workload, then you should not use this workload model, workload backup model. Uh, as you have seen there, when you create a backup configuration, your workload will get a restart, restart with the, will restart with the sidecar. So if you don't want to inject a sidecar, then you should not uh, use workload backup. In that case, you can, uh, use another model which is called volume snapshotting, uh, which is actually dependent on volume, uh, Kubernetes CSI driver. So that can be used. Uh, also, if you want to keep your backup management independence of your workload, then you shouldn't use this workload backup. Here we have seen that uh, whenever we have created a backup configuration, uh, it makes up sense in your workload. Whenever we create a restore session, it also makes up changes in your workload. So your workload actually is not independent of the backup. So if you want to keep this independent, you should, uh, you should use the volume snapshotting or an other job model if possible. So that was the most of the question we heard frequently. So if you still have any question, you can go through the documentation. We have a pretty good documentation here. Uh, these documentation are well organized. In this concept section, you will see what the status architecture and different uh, different uh, uh, CRD and their, what, what are the purpose of them. Then in setup section, you will see how to uh, install, uninstall the stash 
and in this guide section will uh, guide you through some tasks i mean it will show how you want to back up and restore your deployment your stateful set or your standalone pvc uh, this thing so please read the documentation then you can join our public slack and ask a question that is a helpful community who will answer your question and we also try to answer as much as possible then you can also file an issue in our github repository okay so that's the end thank you for listening uh, hope this will help you go through the stage try it yourself and give us your valuable feedback thank you